All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. Yeah, we're turning our attention to a brand new sport, Omega Ball. Yeah, Omega Ball, a new variation of football involving a circular pitch and three goals, made its debut in Trinidad and Tobago on Sunday at Skinner Park in San Fernando. Sports Max, your home of champions, was live on location broadcasting Omega Ball's debut in the Caribbean. Our own Gerard Morrisili was on commentary and he's on set with us to tell us more about this event. Um, first of all, Gerard, how was your short trip to Trinidad and Tobago? I gather you gallivanted quite a bit and had a great time. Yeah, you did describe it just now. It was short. <laughs> I woke up in a country yesterday and I'm here, back here on set with two gentlemen who forgot to tell me that I needed a jacket. <laughs> Yesterday was Father's Day. I'm not sure what that means. Let's talk about <laughs> Omega Ball. Yes. yes? Um, what was it like? How much did you enjoy it? Oh, I, I enjoyed it tremendously. I, it was a lot of fun. Um, what I found about Omega Ball was not necessarily the style of play, but necessarily the excitement that came with it. Uh, Sir Lance, you being a footballer yourself, Ricardo would not know about that. He, he, <laughs> I think he's put down his cleats a little while. But it, it was something that you could enjoy um, if you're not necessarily the 11 per side type of player. You like something fast, exciting. Uh, the, one of the announcers at the stadium yesterday said it was the T20 of football. So I, as the game went along, I kind of agreed with it. Yeah. When we previewed on Friday's show what would have happened on the weekend here, Talk to us about the crowd support and uh, how much the fans embraced it because it's completely different, well, not completely different, but it's significantly different from regular football. Yeah, they, they enjoyed it thoroughly, uh, particularly the girls game. The girls weren't on the, our broadcast, but the fans enjoyed watching these girls play against each other and they were fascinated with the style of play, the format of this game, um, having opportunities. Some of them were even shouting score the other goal, score the other goal, and because there are three goals that you, you have an opportunity to score at. And I, I just thought that they were well into this game. You know, fans are coaches, but this time they did not, they did less coaching and more watching of the game. So they really thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, because the fact is the rules are different. And yeah. They have three goals to score in, and my understanding is that two of the three teams that are on the pitch can only score in two goals. Correct. They, they, they can't score in all three goals. Correct. So they defend their own goal, and yes. then there's two goals that are open that they can score at, which makes for exciting football because, as we saw in a couple of opportunities in the second game especially, there were times where one, a whole set of players were on one side of the field, and then a player gets the ball, lands on his foot, and then he turns and goes the other way yes. and tries to take a shot and score in yeah. some instances. So it's really good on the eyes and for the excitement. Yeah, I was, I was pointing out on Friday's show that in competitive football, part of our drills that we used to do would include a, a, a pitch condition with your, uh, an opportunity for it to score in two mm. goals. And I thought that part of what that did was to keep you thinking mm -hmm. because the, 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 it, it was outside of what is normal, so you had to be alert and the opportunist, opportunity to do something different is always at the back of your mind. So apart from the drills helping in some tactical things that the coach would want to do, I think it actually made you sharper mentally because you had to think quickly. And I did make that point on commentary yes. um, yesterday a lot that we were focusing on that, Leo and I, because in the Caribbean, let's face it, Sir Lance and Ricardo, that's part of our problem when we're playing any sport. We don't tend to think for long periods of time. I mean look at test cricket mm. but that's a different discussion <laughs> um, but it is a sport where or should I say a version of a sport where now you have to always be game aware yes you have to see where you are on the pitch you have to be able to find the loopholes and capitalize on mistakes from the other team or capitalize on their build-ups so it's a really good game um, it sharpens not only your skills on the ball, yeah. but more your mindset. Yeah, that's the, that's the point I was trying to make. Do you think it has potential for growth, given what you've seen, you saw over the weekend? Yeah, and I think where we started with the broadcast, or where the 
Trinidad and Tobago, Omega Ball, and Tidai Nation would have started with the juniors. That's where we can get this game to go because I did expect going there that we would see the seniors playing this game. But instead we saw the young females and then we saw the young boys intercall SSFL players and then the Overton Division for all the SSFL players. They played those games and I found that it was intriguing watching them play. The fans enjoyed seeing them play. And if we can incorporate that not only in SSFL but also in schoolboy football or other areas, I think we are going to get on to something that is really big in the Caribbean. And we can even have a specialist team, like how we have T20 specialists um, in cricket or white ball specialists in cricket as they are known. We can also have these specialists. We tried it with futsal. I'm surprised I didn't get off. But now we can have another format, Omega Ball, which is seemingly growing also in the US and have some of these boys go overseas to play, the, become professionals. And I think it's really going to be a hit recreationally. So long as you, you play football, um, recreationally sometimes if you're, when you're not injured. Um, <laughs> I wonder what you mean by that. I mean, Any, anyway, once, you, 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 once you're not injured, you, you're playing. Yeah, you, you so. realize though that you have now written your name indelibly mm -hmm. in the annals of Sportsmax broadcasting history because you're the first Sportsmax commentator ever <laughs> to broadcast an Omega ball game. Wow. How it's does true. that sound? Being between two legends, I'm glad to be able to create history of my own. So it's always good to leave an indelible mark wherever you work. And yes, Sir Lance, thank you so much for bringing yeah, our, up. our producer is wrapping us up. I know you're a cricket man. Who wins tonight? Afghanistan or West Indies? West Indies, no doubt. Okay, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> all right. Jaffo? I don't think he could say anything else in all honesty. Let's go to a break. <laughs> Interactive to close the show. <laughs>